Hey everybody, just getting uh, just just getting launched in here. Or everybody, one person, whoever's currently on. <clears throat> okay, we got it. just a couple minutes. I got to finish this cheese stick and I got to make a dent on this beef stick because otherwise I'm going to go low in the middle of the whole thing. So who do we got right now? Who's on? Just two. One. Someone's like, beef sticks, I'm out of here. Hey, Walter. Good morning, sir. Okay, so I got a philosophical question for only Walter. Cheese sticks. Do you go lengthwise? You know, do you, you do that? Or do you just bite them? That's my question. That's my, that's my opening salvo. Yeah, for me, man. No, Alan, th yeah, you weren't on, Alan, when I first posed the question, the count was one. <laughs> Now it's like three. Hang on, I got it down here. I didn't want to have to make you listen to me eating my beef sticks. Now the count is now eight, but when I first asked the question, there's only one. Yeah, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a lengthwise guy. I'll be a little meticulous about about shredding it lengthwise on it on the string cheese. You know, it has that string texture that can blow into the string. That's for a reason, right? And texture affects flavor. It's not just like some arbitrary thing, you know? Okay, are we getting close? 1131. Seven bodies. Hey, Brandon. Yeah, no, so I'm with you, Walter. If it's regular cheese, then it's all fair game, but it's the string cheese is the question. What do you do with the string cheese? That's the burning question of the day. And there's another big question of the day, which is what in the crap are we doing today? What are we doing? I think. Ooh, oh, I got to remember. Okay. Hang on a second. I'll be right back.
<clears throat> okay. All right, friends. Are we ready? Should we do it? 11.32, we usually give it a couple minutes, but since we've been doing the online thing. No, but, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for that little uh, diversion on the, on the cheese, on the uh, string cheese. Okay, now, a couple items of housekeeping. We've got 11, 11 people on right now. That's going to grow. But um, if you, okay, so I finally figured out uh, how to get Discord voice channel to pipe into this stream so that if you're on YouTube Live and you're just watching or just watching it recorded later, uh, that you get all the audio coming from, you know, live comments on Discord. Okay. And um, let me see. So we should be... Uh, anyway, so if you want to jump on Discord, uh, go to the testing lobby server on Discord, uh, and just under general is a voice channel, and I'm currently on it, and all you have to do is just click on where it says general. Um, you know, in fact, let me just, I'll just show you right here, okay? You click right there on general, and then you join the voice chat, Okay. Everyone got that? That's what you do right there. Boink. When you want to get out of it, you're down here. When you want to control your mic, mute yourself, you know, deafen, etc. All right. So uh, that is really, really handy for um, just asking, you know, just any live discussion. So if anybody wouldn't mind getting on there, we can that, that creates the interactivity. And then any of the voice coming in off Discord um, just winds up going out on YouTube. All right. And if not, I shall just remain this lone guy in the voice channel. Okay, so... Um, I believe that we were talking about, what were we talking about, I.O.? We were talking about I.O. Yes, we were. Okay. I do believe we were. Chapter 8, I.O. Anybody got a confirm or deny on that? You, everyone buying? All right. Anybody want to voice? Anybody want to join me on the, <laughs> on the on the Discord voice channel? Anybody? Anybody? Feeling lonely over there. Okay, let me hit you with a couple of things. Um, and if anybody, does anybody still need um, an invite to the testing lobby? <clears throat> if you still need an invite to the testing lobby, you are, hey, Zach, welcome to the voice chat. Zach, you want to just say something like, I don't that doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure that you can, that it can be heard out through the YouTube thing. Hey, Zach. Zach, you want to unmute your mic and say something just to make sure we got the pipe coming through Discord? Or not. I don't know. Zach, are you there? Are you on the voice? You're on the voice chat. I'm seeing you. I think he slipped out for a cheese stick. He heard us talking about string cheese. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, not hooked up. Okay, thanks. Zach just, anyway, Zach just messaged on the Discord. 
no mic yet. So we got one student in the Discord voice chat. Ah, that's all right. All right. Okay. Welcome everybody. Let's get uh, let's get cooking. Okay. One thing that I got to talk about. Uh, and we got Tanner. Welcome to the voice chat. Tanner, can you want to just say something on the voice chat? Tanner, you coming through? Did you say something? I'm going to try to... Sometimes I get to a mode where, like, I can't hear stuff on the voice chat, and I've got to, like, disconnect and reconnect. Tanner, can you hear me okay? Yo, Tanner, anybody? Tanner, do you have a mic, too, not working? Okay, Zach, we gotta have, I just want I just want some live test on the voice channel. Zach, can you say something? Other Zach? Zach number two. Pitiful. Zach, can you hear me? Zach Shattuck? No, I can. Okay, all right, there we go. Okay, and in, in another 15 seconds, that should pipe out the YouTube feed. So, uh, anyway, any confirm from the uh, folks listening on the YouTube feed that, that we actually heard Zach's voice, that would be great. Just, just confirming that the setup is still right. So, okay, let's, let's rock and roll. Let's do this thing. We're talking about I.O. Oh, before we're talking about I.O. So, it turns out... Um, was going through with uh, TAs and with my video magic guy, uh, Tyler. Um, hang on a second. Oh, so Tanner, you said something and it didn't go. Let's try it. Tanner, if you don't mind checking back in and just, and just interrupt me uh, on the voice chat. I'm just trying to, again, I'm just trying to make sure this thing works. It's super handy later on when we get, when we got any live interaction and then it's just part of the audio, you know, of the recording. So, okay, everybody heard Zach. All right, so we're we're in sweet land. Thank you. Mm, very nice. Okay. Before we talk about I.O., so uh, Tyler and I were going through all the video stuff and it turns out that there were uh, a number of video recorded lectures uh, just before spring break that the video was okay but that but there was there was a problem with the mic brutal but true and uh, as a consequence we have like I don't know like four class periods where there's video but there's no audio and um, for some of you who was I talking to I can't even remember now um, yeah, um, let me see. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Who is that? Yeah, it was Ryan. Um, Ryan and I were talking and kind of walking through. So here is what is missing, okay? The second half of, so these, this is lecture material that, that we did in class, but we don't have videos online. And I know for some of you, you know, it's kind of like review time, you're doubling back, you know, where we've talked about it. So here's what we're missing. The second half of chapter four lecture, uh, is that, I think that's von Neumann architecture. All of chapter five, which, what's chapter five? Uh, I don't remember, chapter five is, LC3, and then the first half of chapter six, which is programming. Now, it's not assembly language, so that all predates assembly language. But so from the second half of von Neumann architecture through the LC3 architecture and then into programming, we don't have uh, uploaded videos. Uh, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, it has kind of been my intention, obviously, to have all of that material um, just for you guys for reference and doubling back and you know whatever so here's what we're gonna do though to kind of help compensate 
we are going to do a help section. We're going to we're going to start running a few help sections. Uh, look for the announcement on Discord. Okay, go to the testing lobby on Discord, and we're going to do one today at three o'clock, and it's going to basically be so three o'clock right here, same channel. We're going to broadcast it out on uh, on YouTube again. And it'll be labeled, you know, CS 28, 10. It'll be like chapter four help section or something like that. And basically, I'm just going to have, I'll throw the slides up and we can kind of talk about it. But it, it's going to be a lot more driven by whoever's online. So anybody that wants to join that, just go to the, I'll post the link in the Discord channel when I go live. Um, or you can just hit my YouTube channel. Um, and... It's really going to be, it's like, I'm going to be like, is it, is this concept clear? And if everyone's like, yeah, we got it, we're going to move on. So if there's stuff, you know, that you want, it'll, it'll help if you can be there. I know there's other classes and stuff, but so, um, it'll be kind of like a lecture, but more like a faster lecture than it would be, you know, when we're doing it live the first time in class. Okay. So everybody got that today, three o'clock, same right here. Okay. Everybody cool? Oh, and then one other thing I wanted to say about, uh, again, for the, I got two, I got a pair of Zacks uh, in the Discord channel. I got 14, uh, I got 16 viewers on YouTube. For any of the YouTube viewers, if you want to hear my audio in real time, jump on the voice channel on Discord. Okay, and then now the, the video, there's no way around that. That's going to be a lag. There's nothing I can do about that. And I can't even do screen share in Discord because apparently that doesn't, the Mac screen share for a, on a Mac Discord doesn't work, which sucks. Okay, let's do this thing. Let's go, let's go, uh, let's rock and roll. And then also for the Zacks in the Discord channel, Sometimes I, you, you're going to say something, I can't hear you. Dr shoot me a message in Discord, okay? It's like, you can't hear me. And that just, it's a well-known well problem. Okay. So here's where we were. Any, is there anything else? Anybody got anything else that we need to hit housekeeping? That's all I've got. Um... Be working on the exams, be pounding the exams. I beg you. Okay. We started talking about I.O., input output. We talked about status registers. We got to here. Okay, yeah. Um, ooh, and I wanted to just quickly double check um, how many actual slides we've got here. Yeah, I gotta I gotta make my move here. Okay. Oh, Vlad, that would be great, man, if they did find a way. For now, again, Vlad, keep in mind it's about Mac. Windows, I think, works. Linux works, and the Mac does not. That's my understanding. So, man, I hope that would be fantastic. Okay. So here's the deal. Back to I/O. We're ready. Oh, and I think I pointed out last time. I have the whiteboard. I have the whiteboard if we need it, even though it's going to be too far away. But I'm still working on it. Um, memory map. So there's there's two different, broadly speaking, two different ways of doing I.O., okay? One is where you designate specific instructions that are built into the hardware. You know, we have like add and 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 load. You know what I mean? We have all these instructions. Well, in some systems, they'll actually have instructions specifically for I.O., okay? Now, you can kind of fake that a little bit, which is kind of what we do with the LC3, because we have trap instructions. And the trap instructions, well, there is a trap instruction. And when you do the trap instruction, you articulate, you know, you hand it the number, like which trap routine do you want me to run? It's essentially a function call, okay? 
a trap call, a trap instruction is essentially a function call. Uh, it just happens to be kind of well-known functions that are, you know, the addresses are in the are in the trap uh, vector table. Uh, but so when we do things like you know in out, etc. in LC three, that's a way of kind of um, it looks like an instruction, like there's an in instruction or an out instruction. It looks like it, but really that's a shorthand for a trap routine. If I say halt. There's not actually a halt instruction. There's a trap routine, hex 25. And by the way, hex 25, not decimal 25. Okay, when you're doing, when you're doing machine language for a halt, x25. Okay, zero zero one zero zero one zero one. I'm talking technology. Okay, it is not the decimal 19. You know, which winds up being something like, what is that, one three, I think, you know, in the hex. Yeah, that's just shown up a lot lately. So, okay. The other one, which is very, so you do see the specific I.O. instructions. The other one is memory mapped I.O., okay, which we're going to talk about quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, we talked about the, so before we get to memory map, specific I.O. instructions, um, there are opcodes for the I.O. actions. That's the bottom line. And the instruction looks like the instruction, right? So it might just say something like input, you know, read a value from the keyboard and put it in R whatever. It would be like that, okay? Um, you do see that. Um, and, when, and that's kind of straightforward when it happens. The problem, one of the problems, is that there are so many, as we pointed out, let me back up. See that last bullet? Real computer systems have hundreds or thousands of I.O. device support. Support for thousands, you know, actively installed and connected, a lot, you know, really a lot. If I pull up my settings, I've got, you know, there's like four or five different sound consuming, you know, I.O. devices that I can pump sound to, right? So, um... So you've got to have flexible ways of doing this interaction. In the LC3, the whole, it's all just rudimentary. There's a, there's a console and there's a, there's a keyboard. And it's all super simplified, right? The console, you hand it ASCII. Keyboard just gives you ASCII. That isn't the real world, okay? That's not the real world. Um, that is way oversimplified just to make your life easier and to simplify the learning, okay? So with memory mapped I.O., there are, again, a couple of different ways to, to sort of conceptualize it, all right? Um, we're going to talk about really three, two, and then the third is really the hybrid. One is memory mapped registers, and the other is memory mapped memory locations, okay? Uh, and we're going to break these down a little bit, okay? Uh, and then we're going to, it'll be really obvious when we're done how... Um, how the LC3 does it, which is with memory map and memory locations. Now, and again, you got to remember that the notion of a register is kind of a, it's kind of a floaty concept, okay? Um, you know, in, we've been dealing with registers as like general purpose registers, meaning little tiny chunks of memory, right? With special names like R7 or PC, which is not a general purpose register, but it is a register, right? The control codes are three one-bit registers. So they're just that's just little memory. Well, this is very similar where you would have like an I.O. register with a special name and you would interact with it like you would a register, only it's magically connected to the input-output device. Okay, that's the memory map idea. I'm just talking to this register. I just give this thing to a register and the register goes whoop and then just teleports the thing over there and how it happens you don't have to care at this level you don't care memory mapped memory locations is similar except instead of reading or writing you know uh, from or to uh, a register with a special name there's just a location in memory it has an address and you just read or write to that address voila I write to that address it's like a wormhole through space Poof, it goes away it goes out there or when I read from that address, 
it's coming from out there. Now, those are, I hope those are both really straightforward ideas. They're a little odd to hear, I guess, maybe the first time. But the concept's not that, really not that strange. Okay? I mean, what's the example? I want to send a letter, back when that was a thing, to somebody, right? I go to the mailbox when that was a thing. <laughs> I go to the post office, which is still a thing. You know what I mean? I go in there, there's a mail slot. I take my mail, I put it in this slot, and magically it travels to Iowa or something. You know what I mean? I mean, the mail slot is just a mail slot. So that's actually like a memory mapped I.O. You know what I mean? I put my letter in that spot, and it just magically shows up over there where it needs to show up. Is that okay? That's not bad, is it? I don't think that's too bad <laughs> um, as an example, but you kind of get the idea. Um, okay, so let's, and then often you'll kind of see kind of a blend. So let's kind of go into this. Memory mapped registers. Um, uh, memory mapped registers. So you use the same load and store just like you do with other registers. Okay. Um, and as I said, they magically connect to I.O., uh, so, and this is really just what we said. You put a value in a register, it goes to the monitor. You read from a certain register, it's coming from the keyboard. If that's, can, if there's, if there's any lingering confusion on that, you got to tell me, okay? Please tell me. If you got any confusion or just like, you know, something that's not clicking. I have a random question. Yeah, Zach. When you do get C... In Travertine, is he just checking the register where it's expecting a character over and over? Say it, say it again. It was a little choppy. <clears throat> Sorry. So when you do get C, the Travertine, does it just check that register where it expects a character to be over and over? Yes. Yes. In fact, um, yeah. So Zach, I everybody, I hope everybody could hear that on YouTube. Um, where is it? Here we go. Yeah, I just wanted to pull up you know, just kind of for everybody, what we're talking about, okay? So Zach asked, when you're doing get C, is it just checking it over and over and over again? And, and the answer is, is kind of, is a, is a qualified yes, okay? Um, and I'm just pivoting here because it's bigger for me. So when you look at get C, um, you read a single character from the keyboard, um, but what it's doing and what we could do actually is jump onto the LC3 and go look at the get C code. Okay. Which is once we look at what's going on here, that'll be really meaningful. Okay. Cause what it's really doing, remember we talked about last time, the status bits and the data status bit, the status byte and the data bytes, right. Or the status word, data word. Um, the status says, do you have something for me yet? Do you have a character? Do you have something yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Right? The status, and then you're like, and it's like, nope, nope, nope. And finally, somebody presses the status register or the status location gets written to. And then it's like, I read it and it goes, yes, I've got something. Now it reads a different location to actually pull that character out. And as soon as it reads from that location, the system resets or clears that status thing and you're ready to start polling again. Does that, does that make sense, Zach? Yeah, that makes sense. I, w I just asked because I was following the LC3 simulator and I noticed it was running a bit over and over until I entered something. Yep, yep, yep. That's because, and that is the get C. Um, uh, yes, because what it's doing is just checking this. When you're in get C, it'll just park till you till it gets something right it's just we also call that blocked on io okay because it's like i'm over there i have this program i'm trying to run i say get c it's just gonna wait till it gets something it's blocked waiting um yeah and we should yeah let's well let's I, we should dive into that i'll just show you the code in the lc3 which is fairly cool okay 
Memory so memory map registers. Yeah, we did that one. No, hang on, that's not what I wanted to do. Where am I? Okay. And the memory location, same thing. And what you're going to see in the get C is memory map, memory location. Okay. So this is the, here we're going to break it down now for the LC3, how it uses this memory mapped IO. Okay. And the other thing too, I want to say, so some of the particulars here with the LC3 are, are particular to LC3. You're not going to necessarily see this exact way or that address or this format or whatever. That's different pretty much for every system. Um, you know, you'll see similarities within a family of systems, right? Uh, but the concept of memory mapped I.O. everywhere, 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 okay? It is all over the place. Um, okay, so... And also just, I want to just throw this out to the YouTube listener, watchers. Were you able to hear um, that exchange uh, that, you know, Zach asked the question? Were you able to hear again? Are we still getting the voice chat coming through Discord out to the YouTube channel? Um, the answer ought to be yes, but I just love a clarification on that in the, in the comments, if you wouldn't mind. Or in the comments on Discord, either way. Okay, so um, here's what happens. Um, in the LC3, remember we talked about, right, that you've got all these addresses. We've got those memory addresses starting at 0000, zero, zero, zero because we've got 16-bit addresses. Every address has 16 bits in it, right? It's word addressable, two bytes per, uh, per spot. From 0000... zero, zero, zero to FDFF, that range is like real memory. You can put stuff there. You know, it's just your storage. It's your garage. You do what you want with it. But, and remember how the very beginning, it's, a, it's all the addresses of the trap routines, which we touched on, but we haven't really, we got next lecture where we beat into that a little, little more strongly. Well, it turns out that address is FE00 up to the very end, which is FFFF. Those locations are IO, and we'll call them device registers, okay? And that's just kind of a common vernacular to speak of data register, status register, device registers, in the sense that they are like specialized memory, okay? But we access them with an actual address that looks like an otherwise valid address. So if anybody wrote a program and like just tried to store stuff out there, it's not going to work, okay? Because they're all like magic teleportation locations. When you're talking to that, you're actually like suddenly you're on a telegraph talking to somebody or a, you know, it's like not what, it's not what you thought it was. Um, and then, then we just kind of talked about, again, this notion of register. So please, I hope, just don't get, I hope you don't get confused. Please don't get confused. Um, we call them registers because they're specialized. Okay. That's my view of it. And so, yes, it's a location in memory with an address. It's not, okay, secret time. It's not actually a location in memory. It's fake. There's no actual that there's no actual location FFF, you know, zero. There's no spot in memory that somebody's looking at and managing and doing stuff. When I, when you say FF, you know, F zero, you know, and you just go give that, you put that in the MDR, sorry, in the MAR, right? Out for memory, in the memory address register, you know? And this the MAR he like grabs that and the memory manager just goes. Hey, uh, that's an interesting address you got there, you know, and it's not going to the real memory. And then they like, they literally go and take it somewhere else. You called it an address, but it just like took it and went somewhere else with it. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? I know that's a little weird, but, but it, that's, that's actually what's going on. And I'll show you the picture in the LC3 architecture. Okay. Um, so yes, they're IO registers and yes, they're mapped to memory addresses. That's, that's how you get through all that. 
Okay. Now, we have to take a break right now to talk about asynchronous versus synchronous. This is a term you need to understand in computer science. You need to under It's a good term just for life, and you kind of already have a sense of it if you know what these words mean, right? The, the chronos, the chrono part of chronos has to do with time, right? Same reason that we have uh, chronologies, which is the, the events over time, right? Um, what else? What else? Where else does the word chronological order, right? Which is the order in which something happened in time. But it, it's the same root. Uh, I don't know. Where else does it show up? The Incredibles. It's the password for that system, which is really bad for, you know, really syndrome. You're a smart, you're an otherwise smart guy with some personal issues. And that's your password for the whole system. That was bad. Chrono uh, syndrome needs to, you know, take a security class. Anyway, um, when you're in, when you're doing things that are synchronous, you are somehow in lockstep. Okay. Now, some of you are going to go synchronous lockstep, and then it's going to be exam time, and then you're going to see synchronous, and you're just going to write down lockstep, and I'm going to give you zero points for that. Okay. You have to believe me. This is Dr. K making a threat, okay? You got to believe me. Because that's not explaining to me what it is. That's dropping a buzzword that you hope satisfies me. Okay? You with me on this? Um, what we're doing right now uh, is roughly synchronous because... You know, I'm live, you're listening at this, you know, you're watching and, and or listening at the same time, um, you know, and you can now if some people are not going to be here right now and this thing is getting recorded right by YouTube and it's going to be posted as a YouTube video later on, somebody else is going to watch that and that will be asynchronous, synchronous for those of us that are here, asynchronous for those of us that are going to be later. So synchronous meaning connected in terms of, you know, in terms of time and asynchronous meaning not connected, in, you know, on the basis of time. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, I've got three brave souls in the voice channel. They're not brave. They're just, they're just whatever they are. They're just smart. They're just happy. And they're on the voice channel and they are hearing my voice in approximately real time. Okay. And so that's synchronous voice to them. And then 20 seconds after I speak, approximately, the video and the audio reaches the YouTube folks. So it's synchronous, but it's delayed. You know what I mean? It's not purely asynchronous. But if you pause your YouTube, which all the YouTube folks can do, you can pause the YouTube and then catch up. Once you pause it and come back, you're now asynchronous. If you're listening... And you're kind of, you know, you're kind of uh, on the same delay. You know, you got this like, I mean, there's, in other words, there's always a delay. If we're face to face, there's a delay in the speed of sound. Right? So, yes, we're synchronous, but there's a slight delay. If you're on the phone, there's more delay. If somebody's international or long distance or they're on some kind of a mechanism, Skype, you know, Skype, Zoom, any kind of video chat, um, there's a slightly greater delay, you know, and you have to like wait, but that's still synchronous in the sense that we're taking turns, okay? Um, and asynchronous is like, I just, I put a billboard up and then sometime you're going to drive past it. You send me an email, I check my email later. Or some of you have learned, I never check it or something. I never get it. Okay, that's asynchronous. Everybody cool with that? You got it? Don't just say the word lockstep. You know I'm serious about this, right? You better. You better know. Okay, so here's some examples, again, of synchronous. Land, oh, ancient landline, right? There's no voicemail. We, we innovated and created answering machines, okay? 
because there wasn't voicemail, there was no messaging, no caller ID, right? You had to you had to call when somebody happened to be at their house at their phone, right? So if you were like at a pay phone when that was a thing, trying to call your mom because you're at the mall and they just closed, she's actually out driving around trying to find you at the mall. You're at the mall at the pay phone calling the house. She's not there, right? You remember this? Well, some of you don't remember this. Those of, There's just a few of us that are a little older a few of you that are a little older than me that's way older, right? That this was life. And you might you might just sit there all freaking night. You know, I mean, you then next thing you know, you're like, well, it only take me an hour and a half to walk home and you take off walking. Now, of course, you're just you're just saying screw it on the whole communication, right? That's what happens when the okay, when the only communication you have is synchronous. This is what you get walking home from the mall or other just crazy stuff because you can't get a hold of somebody. Or when somebody's on the phone and you get a busy signal, back when that was a thing, you try to call somebody all freaking night long. Call them, call them polling mode. We'll talk about polling. Remind me that example when we get to um, polling versus interrupts, okay? Anyway, um, oh man, the stories from back in the day. Um, Matt, you remember, really, remembers not getting picked up after school because of landlines. You're not that old. Were you guys just like Luddites? Were you like in an enclave? Be honest. Be honest, Matt. Were you living, were you Amish? I want to know the rest of the story. Because, I mean, I, I, well, uh, maybe it was still a thing. There's some that some people showed up later to the game and really smartphones. I don't know. I don't know. I want to I want to hear the rest of the story, Matt. Um, OK. Yeah, yeah, man. So we just that was that was tough. And then there were people like that would be like, I'm not going to have an answering machine for whatever their reasoning was. And all it really did was put the onus on you, you know, like somebody be on the phone or they weren't home. You couldn't just say, hey, I just wanted to let you know that. Yes, I can come to the softball game. Yes, you've got you've got yourself a second baseman. Right? No, they're they're like we're more traditional. We don't have those answering machines. They're just technology is ruining our lives. Now, you know what else ruins people's lives? Is me having to call you 30, 50 times, you know, and hang on the phone, calling, 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 calling. Till somebody answers, and then it's your seven-year-old. Huh? Yeah, hey, is your dad there? No. Can you take a message? Eh. Okay, just tell him. And you know it's not going to be right. This, these, were, these were miserable days. Um, hey, hang on a second. Just a second. I have to... Uh, Okay, sorry. I just had to. I just had to taunt somebody. Um, was that okay? It was good. That was a good seven-year-old. Thank you. I have grandchildren. I was a parent. I'm a parent. I was a parent of small children. Okay. Yeah, man. No, that's, uh, it's miserable, man. I'm so. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sam. I I was just taunting. I was just taunting Sam. I didn't know if you were on or not. Uh. All right. Anyway, that's that's synchronous. And honestly, there's value. There's value to synchronous, right? Um, touch is synchronous, right? I can't bat. Remember when that was a thing, right? I can't give you a big hug asynchronously. You know what I mean? I really can't. I, I the, the, the hugs are synchronous, and that's cool and it's valuable and it's warm and it's beautiful and and even the shake in the hand or whatever. All that physical contact. Um, you know, throwing football around is synchronous, you know. So there's a lot, you know, I'm not, I'm not like this all, all async all day long, you know. Um, so I want to play this. This will probably get this video taken down. And if it does, I can like edit this back out and then put it back up. But because, and by the way, fair use, this really is a f fair use. But this should audio 
should come popping out okay. But this is a good example of what we sometimes, it's just a mismatch. It's a synchronous, asynchronous, timing mismatch. But face-to-face -face conversations are synchronous, right? But just check this out. And then just again, let me make let me know on the YouTube side that this is coming through. Hang on a second. I touched away from it. Now, by the way, it, YouTube, can you hear that? Are you, is everybody hearing that coming through on YouTube? Uh, and, and, and depending upon the volume, I can adjust the mix on that. Give me, give me a green light. No volume. No! Dang it. So close and yet so far. I've made so much progress. No, in fact, I can, yeah. Mm. Dang it. Okay, I have one idea. Hang on. No, this is worth it because this relates to everything. Um, you know the one. You know the one, right? I'm just... Uh, okay, let me ask you this. Tell me if you can hear this. And there's no copyright on this one because this is mine. I'm just going to let that play for a second. And would you please... Let me know if you hear that on YouTube, uh, on YouTube. Are you hearing that? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got it. I got it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Now it's coming. Now it's going to come. Sorry, pilot error on my part. it that is that is me and Josh Dutton my good buddy Josh on the fiddle me on the guitar um, we performed that at uh, the college convocation for physical and mathematical sciences at BYU a couple years back uh, Josh got tagged because he's like crazy smart and was like some kind of valedictorian or something and they said hey you want to play some music and he said I will if I will if Dr. K plays with me. And so we pull that together. Okay, uh, that's called Asha Khan Farewell, and I am happy to shoot a copy to anybody that wants it. Not that long, but it's really pretty. It came out really well. Okay, now here's the part where we get, I get shut down. Hey, Flash, I'd love you to meet my friend. Uh, darling, I've forgotten your name. Hmm. Officer Judy Hap, CPD, how are you? I am. Wow. Doing. Okay. Just. Fine. As well. As. I can. Be. Hmm. What. Hang in there. Can I. Do. Well, I was hoping you could run a play. For you. Well, I was hoping you could. Today. 
Well, I was hoping you could run a play for us. We okay, hang on a second. It turns out that every time I context swap off of YouTube, uh, sorry, off of PowerPoint, um, it stops the video. So I need to get back to configured. And then we're, anyway, it's, uh, it's a little bit funky, but it's working. Are you guys hearing that? You're, are you hearing the audio from uh, whatever that movie was called? We're in a really big hurry. Sure. Not on Discord, but it seems What's like you're hearing it on YouTube. Plate. Two nine T Number. Two nine THD zero three. Two nine. THD03. By the way, hang on, sorry. Da, curse you, PowerPoint. Um, okay, that's probably good. I, don't, I really don't want to get the whole thing taken down for copyright, whatever. Um, anyway, that's just an example, you know, of, of the synchronous nature, but these sort of weird delays, and there's like a, there's timing mismatch, right? Now, by the way, also volume on the, when you were coming through YouTube, was that volume needing to be higher? Was it okay? You know, how was that coming? Also, um, Discord people, I can do you a solid here because I think that I know how to get the audio to pipe in for you guys. Um, boo, 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 boo. I'm going to try something. Okay, new audio device. Okay, so here's my question. MacBook Pro. Okay, Discord people, can you still hear me real time? Discord pals. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, let me pivot back. Sorry. It's uh, it's nonstop, man, nonstop. So that's not going to do the trick. I just got to go. Yeah. Okay. So hey, uh, so Discord pals, you can hear me now, right? For a second there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I was trying. I was trying to play with. Um, same way that I could get the, the audio from the, from discord to pop out to everybody else. I was trying to see if I could get the input to come in and have what I'm doing, piping into my audio into discord, but it's just not set up for it. So I apologize for that. Um, that's okay though. Um, okay. All right. So yeah, yeah. So let's talk about, let's talk about this whole experience, right? Um, some of you are slow talkers. Some of you are fast talkers. No crime, no crime. I'm a fast talker. And so there are times when I'm talking to a slow talker <laughs> uh, and I feel like the rabbit, you know what I mean? You know, just like, uh, you know, kind of ready to move on. And uh, anyway, there's that, there's that weird mismatch. So you get the timing mismatch. That's the punchline. All that just for a timing, for, a, for a, a punchline on timing. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. So, um, so the asynchronous things, anything that we do... Um, oh, and by the way, I was going to check on the comments. Um, Matt, parents didn't get cell phones till you were like 14 which is probably like, what, 10 years ago or something. Oh, it's brutal. Brutal. Um, oh, Alan, AOL, right, the phone, the phone modem dial-up in the good old 90s. Oh, my crap. Yeah, that was an adventure, right? You can't call in because someone's on the internet, right? Or, or you're on the internet and somebody, like, picks up the phone and starts dialing out and... And they like knock you off or, you know, oh, oh, can't believe we lived. How did we live through that? 
think this whole pandemic crisis is tough, man. How do we get through the internet in the 90s? See, that quote right there is the reason I'll never be able to run for Congress. You know, there'll be a billboard on I-15. <laughs> Charles Knudsen, heartless bastard. You know that's what's going to happen, right? The, the, uh, anyway. <laughs> no, anyway. What are we talking about? Async. Uh, yeah, caller ID, right? I see who it is. I make a decision. Uh, I find out who did call. Uh, voicemail, email, texting. So you know, and there's a lot of life that's asynchronous by nature, right? I drop the breadcrumbs later when I'm in the hiking in the forest. Who did that? Hansel and Gretel. What a horrible story. And then I can find my way back, you know. Um, I find messages that are left from the past, whatever, right? Um, it's asynchronous. I go out to my driveway. There's deer poop in the driveway. Asynchronous, you know. I like. I know there was a deer there. How do I know? Okay. Now, speaking of phones, this is the one. I I've met Gary. He is the funniest guy working today. Okay. He is the absolute funniest guy. I recommend him. Um, but I want to just play this because relative to phones and the generational thing, I just want to throw this out at you. Okay. And, and again, I'll try to just, I'll adjust the volume down just a little bit maybe, but, but check this out. And again, for the discord folks, you may need to just like, you know, listen on, on YouTube with the delay because I can't give it to you in real time. Okay. Hold on. The phone, my, my parents had a very different experience with the phone. They, this is good. They used to talk to people on it. <laughs> and to me, the phone is this, this seldom used app on my phone. <laughs> and and if, you, if you use it on me, oh, God help you. I, how dare you? I am furious when I get a phone call. You, you text me first to see if I'm even taking phone calls today. <laughs> and I'll, I'll text you back with a window. Anyway, I highly recommend uh, go check out. I don't know what show he's on in this clip, probably Conan. Um, I highly recommend Gary Goldman for your comedy needs during this shutdown. In fact, I even posted somewhere, where did I post it? Probably on Facebook, um, a podcast with Gary Goldman um, in which he's talking about, um, he's talking about depression and talking about you know, he, he's a guy who suffered from severe depression. And, and so he's got a lot of insight, um, obviously, you know. And he, anyway, he has an HBO special called The Great Depression. And um, anyway, I've seen him live a few times, met him, and uh, he's just a beautiful man. And uh, so I recommend, I recommend his comedy to you at this time. And I will post the link for the, the podcast interview with him where he's talking about, you know, how do you kind of manage when, when everything's disrupted and everything's kind of down and you're stuck in your house and things like that. It's a really great, great, uh, uh, great podcast interview with, uh, with Gary Goldman. Okay, let's keep going. The phone. Uh, hang on a second. There we go. Okay, so what happens is you got to have some mechanism um, to coordinate because everything's asynchronous, right? You got to have some mechanism. We call that handshaking. Why? I wonder why. I wonder why. You know, there's protocol. So protocol is a word that we use to describe any of the rules for exchange, right? You're in a business meeting. You're sitting at a conference room, conference table. When the other party, other person, somebody you're meeting comes into the room, you stand up. If you sit down, it looks like you're kind of a pretentious ass or something. You know, you stand up, you, you know, you shake their hands if that's a thing. If you're in Japan, you, you know, you bow. You know, there's, there's just these different, different um, protocols about how you do what you do, right? And handshaking in our culture, back when that was a thing, handshake, what, what are we doing? We're, 
we're sizing each other up or something. I don't know, whatever. We're originally, what does it suggest? I have no weapon in my hand. You know, I'm not going to kill you, you know, whatever. But we do have to have this give and take. And in, in data communications, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, anything, uh, infrared, uh, there is this process whereby you do sort of a connection negotiation. You negotiate the parameters. How fast can you go? What's your biggest packet size? Because some devices can handle bigger packet sizes, others smaller, transmission rates, what's your tolerance for delays and bad connections, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you negotiate all of that when you set up a communication. Now, in our LC3 world, the negotiation was done when the thing was designed, okay? And we just decided here's how it's going to work. And it's just, it is what it is. So again, real systems, there's other more complex sorts of interactions, okay? Um, so here's what we do with the LC3 when we're dealing with this uh, uh, characters, okay? One is there is this thing called a ready bit, okay? So the user types the character, and when that happens, that ASCII value gets put into a buffer in the system, in the architecture. Again, so oversimplified from what other you know, real systems look like. But the ready bit gets set. It's like, you know, when you, you ever do this with your mailbox where there's like a little flag, bing, right? And you throw, you put outgoing mail, and then you put the flag up, right? You guys do that? You know what I'm talking about. The flag goes up, and then that tells the mail carrier that, um, that you've got mail outbound even if there's nothing coming in. Or so they don't just come in and, like, you know, shove it in. They see the flag, and they know to stop first and pull mail out. Okay, that all, all that is, that's just a ready bit. That flag is the ready bit. Um, when you've got, like, like, I've got a couple of messages um, over here, on, like on, on Discord, for example, I've got a little, um, what do we call them, badges. Like, for example, I got a badge from Sam telling me that he is not a slacker. Um, and by looking over at it real quick, you know, I can see where are we at. Yeah, you know what I mean? I, at a glance, I see that there is something for me. That's clear, right? That's super clear. And because I saw the little badge, I knew to go to go check. Okay? Now I also have to like glance over every so often, right? Or you'll sometimes have like there's a sound, a tone, a ding, and that can happen as a way of being more of an interrupt rather than polling, which we really haven't talked about yet. But the idea of interrupt being I'm just gonna poke you when it's time, and polling meaning I'm just gonna keep checking. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Okay. So, um, the user types a character. The ready bit gets set. That means there's, there's something for us. Then the program reads the character and the ready bit gets cleared. Okay. Now, um, we sometimes refer to this as a semaphore. Uh, that, is a more, that is a more complex and elaborate topic. Um, and shows up in operating systems quite a bit. Essentially, what you're trying to do is say, look, you can go ahead and read from that spot where the data comes, but it's just going to be whatever junk was left over from last time. It's not going to be accurate. I need to tell you to go, then you go. And if you go before I tell you, you mess everything up. Right? So it's like, it just makes sure that, that I've got the new character... I read it, and then everything's kind of like set, reset, and okay, and then I'm okay. And it's doing that down at the low-level hardware level so that these things are happening, uh, you know, at a very, very fine level of granularity. Okay. Um, and then the only thing I was saying there about semaphore, the traffic light, me the traffic light metaphor is really this idea. You've got this intersection. Only one car can occupy that one spot at the same time. If you have two of them in the same spot at the same time, it's called an accident, okay? So those traffic light is called, you know, we have these traffic lights. What are they called in uh, 
Spain or Italy or Latin America? Anybody? Bueller? It's called a semaforo in Italian. In, in Italy, it's a semaforo. It's a semaphore. So that term semaphore actually refers to that same idea. And then we turn them and we call them traffic lights. But in, um, you know, uh, Latin, you know, countries with Latin-based language, right? I'm not sure what it is. It's got to be the same in French. It's got to be. But you get the idea. Okay. So this is the interrupt-driven versus polling that I just mentioned. Polling is... I don't even know why, I don't know why is it called polling. It's like you take a poll, right? Polling is asking questions, right? I have polling data. How did I get it? I asked a bunch of people questions. So polling is like, I'm going to check that bit. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? We're there. Okay, now I can do whatever I'm going to do. Interrupt driven is more like there's a ding, right? So, so polling would be like the badges that come up on your apps, right? Whatever they happen to be. Um, you know what I mean? You look at your phone. I've got, you know, mine's like peppered with, with, uh, just red badges, right? Everywhere. I have to go look at that to note, to notice the badge. Okay. Um, but if it makes a sound, makes a ding. So this, this, this bullet is really about like, there's always this, I'm, I'm really fascinated by lousy movies, cliched movies, you know? Like, I don't know how, how you make a movie that's that cliched unless you're being purely ironic about it. You know what I mean? If you're doing it knowing that it's a cliche, to me, that's acceptable. Um, somehow not knowing it's a cliche is not acceptable. But it kind of goes like this. There's always this, there's this villain. You know what I mean? Now, he could be like texting you. Are you done yet? Do you have it? Do you have it? Everyone, you have like friends like that or relationships, right? right? You get pestered, like, no, 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 like, I'll tell you when I've got it. They're polling you, okay? The classic villain is he sits there looking very, very villainous. Um, the classic is, who's the guy? He was, uh, he was the villain in Jack Reacher. You guys remember? Anyway, oh, my gosh, what's his name? Anyway, but he's always like, when the prisoner comes, now when the soldier comes, Anyway, he's like, he's, he's creepy. Anyway, it's like, and then we, then we kill the soldier. Anyway, there's always a guy like that, you know? And, and it's like, the phone just vibrates. And he just goes. And he's got the creepy look. And then underneath you hear, yeah, it's done. And he just like, you know. This is, to me, it's, it's very dramatic but it's entirely unrealistic because there's not enough handshaking going on, right? He never says hello, which, you know, you don't even know. It's like it got picked up. He might have like butt answered. You know what I mean? And you don't even know. And then it's like, it's done. Now, you, granted, you, you figure they know who, the, who they're expecting to the call from or it's a burner phone or something. Anyway, you got the idea. And anyway, when uh, Werner Herzog, thank you. Thank you. No. Oh. That guy is the creeps, man. That guy is so... Uh, yeah, man, the Zach... Yeah, that's right. The prisoner. The prisoner. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I was actually... Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I have to share one. I may not be able to get it. Okay, just a second, just a second. This is gonna be worth it. Maybe, maybe not. I may be just delusional. Um, Where is it? No, I'm not going to. I'll have to cough it up next time. <laughs> um, 
you have things like this is what happens when you put Werner Herzog quotes on inspirational posters. Um, I'll just I'll give you an example. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, here's an example from the Werner Herzog Inspirationals. I don't know if you can see it, but you make this inspirational poster and then you just attach this guy. I hear the ravens, but a denial is building up inside me. Anyway, just go check it out. You, you, you deserve it. You owe it to yourself. Okay. Um, anyway. And Jack Reacher, I recommend it. I recommend the movie. Herzog, one of the truly evil bad guys. Uh, anyway, I think, you got, I, think, I think I've made my point by now. Okay, so let's talk about input from the keyboard. How are we doing on time? We're never good on time. I suck at time management. Here's what happens. Now, we're going to throw a couple acronyms at you. I am never going to trick you with these acronyms or throw that out. Um, but there's a KBDR, KBSR. All I care about is data register, status register, keyboard, keyboard. They're both for the keyboard, okay? Here's how they work. They are a location in memory fake. It's a fake. It's not a real location in memory. But it is a real address. And when you hand this to the MAR, it goes to the special room and gets it. Okay? So what happens is, and these ought to be switched. I should switch these on the slide. My bad. You check the status register and you only check that bit right there. That's the status bit. Now, anybody can anybody think of an easy way to just check that bit? Hmm. What would be an easy way to check that bit? You'd load it and then check the negative bit. Exactly, right? Just just load it and read it in out of memory and uh, check to see if it's negative. If it's negative, boom, you got data. Now you read from the data location. Okay? So literally, you just read this value and then if it goes green light go, then you read from that value, which has the actual data. That's it. Okay, and I think we've got we got time. I'm going to show you this um, in the um, we'll, we'll jump on the LC3. I think we should do it. So that's the this is the whole point, and this is just a little more detail. A key gets struck, the ASCII code in LC3, the ASCII code gets loaded into that register in those seven in those eight bits. Okay, and then the status register gets set to one. Uh, any guesses about which one would kind of need to come first? What are you going to do? If you're the system, would you load the register first and then do the status bit? Or would you do the status bit and then load the register, the data register? I'll take one of the online guys. Um, you cut out for part of the question. Can you ask that again? Yeah. If, you, if you're the system, which would you do first? Would you read the data? Would you load the data, re data register with the value and then hit the status and then flip the status bit or would you flip the status bit and then load the data register and why? What say you? I got all day my friends. What do you think? It's one or the other. You got a 50-50 chance of being right on a pure guess. Anybody? Pressure's on you for that are on that are on Discord on the voice channel. Somebody somebody take a shot. I won't identify your I won't identify you. 
Am I not hearing? Ah, okay. It's doing the thing again. Hang on a second. Yeah, just a second. Okay, I reset. Try again. I should be able to hear Hello? you now. Yep, I can hear you, Zach. Okay, do you do the status bit first? Do I do which one first? The status bit first. Eh. I was I was thinking the opposite. I think like once that value in there is loaded and that's whole all cleared, that's when you'd want to flip that bit. Right. Well, so nothing's in there. Yeah. Well, this. Yeah. The key is the key is as soon as I say status bit go, right? I there's I I could go immediate. I could go on the next clock cycle. You know what I mean? I could read immediately. So if it's like I'm going to set the status bit, I'm ready to go. And what if I read and then the system is just a little slower getting it in there, right? So I'm going to get the data in there. Everything's good. And now I'm going to say, ready, you know, go. A little bit like, you know, dinner time when you got a bunch of kids, right? You get everything ready. Then you're like, okay, ready, go. You don't say ready, go before things are actually out on the table. Just because even as fast as things are, you understand now that it's actually, sure, it's crazy fast, but it's still like clock, 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 clock. And if something happens here on the next clock cycle, something else can happen. That's the deal. When you read the value from the data register, then it, just, then it clears the status register, sets it to zero. And that allows um, the next keystroke to be read and put into the data register okay so what i'm thinking what's up next probably yeah yeah no, we don't need slides man let's not do slides let's do the real deal uh everybody green green for the real deal here let's go green light i just got to pull it up real quick Everybody recognize our friend. I'm going to blow this thing up and try to get the... That's not bad, right? That, that should be visible over, over the broadcast. Okay. So here's what we want to do. Earlier, we... Where are you? There we go. Earlier, I pulled up the documentation... And so Zach asked a question earlier about C out, right? Okay. All right. So this is our documentation for the trap routines. Okay. Uh, not C out. I want to see out, man. That was a flashback. Holy cow. Um, yeah. Get C or out or in. So let's take a look. Yeah, um, C plus plus for a second. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, get well. You got get C and out. You know, it begs you to say C out. So get sure. C reads a single character, and then it doesn't echo it. It it just but it puts the ASCII code into R zero, okay. And then it clears the high bits of R zero, okay. So what I want to do? Notice trap vector, hex two zero. Where's the address of that routine? Anybody, any brave, any brave champions of truth? What's the address in memory of that routine? It's sort of a trick um, question. X zero zero two zero. Was it two zero? It's just zero zero two zero. Yeah. This trap vector. Remember that the very first part of memory is a vector table, and it literally is like an index into that table. Where where each of the um, well where the not where the routine is sorry where the address of the routine is okay so two zero so what I do here I go up here to zero zero two zero and then because I'm smart I make sure it knows I'm talking about that okay so that my friends is the vector table, okay? I'm gonna just, 
This is all vector table. This FD00 is actually a routine that gets called when you call a trap that doesn't exist. And they all have the same number just jammed in there. Right over here at location 0020 in memory is this value 0400. That 0400 is the address of the get C routine. Okay, everybody buying? So when you say trap X20, it goes over to location 0020 in memory, boom, goes and grabs that address and basically does a JSR to that address. Saves the old program counter so you can get back. Okay? Now, I go to 400, notice there's a label. Why is there a label? Because, where is it? Oh, here we go, manage labels. Because the system defaults by putting some labels in there for the addresses of the trap routines, right? There's halt, that's, that's just at that address. We just have some labels in the symbol table that just get, we hang on to them. And this, by the way, from right there, 4000 to 405, that's six instructions, okay? The entire thing is six instructions. Okay, now, well, plus two, two little words of data, okay? And I've got this on my big monitor here, which is the easiest way for me to see it. Um, so I'm seeing what, what you're seeing here um, when I'm looking that way. All right, so here's what happens. Let's take a peek. Uh, and we've, we're, we're kind of out of time. We're out of time. Uh, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, if you got to go, that's fine. You can double back and look at this. Well, we've got the moment, and since it's recorded, I'm just going to kind of walk through this for another couple minutes. And then again, you know, if you got to go, double back and look at it and, you know. Um, so number one, why are we storing away R7? Well, the answer is why. Why are we storing away R7? Oh, it's because the PC's been saved in, the R, in R7, and we don't want it to get trashed. We don't touch it. But since we know that it got, you know, that that, that has the program counter in it, um, you know, uh, we save it away. And then over here, load R7, that's getting it back. 408 is just the location we just created. You know, we just decided to use it. Everybody's cool with that, right? That's, that's two instructions and one chunk of data now handled, taken care of. Then we do a load indirect from 406. Okay, now this is where the LDI comes into play. 406, okay, that address is FE00. If I pull the slides back up, do you remember what that was? If I don't pull the slides up, do you remember what that was? It was like the data register for the keyboard? Status register. Or status, okay. Yeah, it's the status register. So what it's going to do, it's going to do a load, an LDI from 4006 right here. And that's FE00, okay? So let's pull up again real quick. And again, I since, since you guys can all come back and watch this later, I need to be like unapologetic about going over and just not rush this too much but it won't take that long here's the instruction set for the LC3 and just to review again there's LDI okay LDI so you compute an address with PC offset what's stored in memory uh, is that LDI oh what's stored in memory at this address is the address of the data to be loaded okay so we're going to load, but we're loading indirect. So in essence, we put, we put the address. So I'm getting like animated. Can you tell? Because we're like getting to the punchline. I take the address of the status register. And I put it here, just local to me. And I did that, you know, I just, I just did like a dot fill 
FE00 probably in my code, okay? And over here in 407, I put FE02, which is the data register, okay? So what this does is it says, go out to FE00, grab whatever's there, put that into, into R0, okay? What am I doing? Branch on zero or positive, right? Status bit's not set yet. I loop, I'm going, that's the, high, that's the sound of high velocity uh, assembly instructions being executed until a keystroke, boom, that, that bit gets set, it reads, and it's now negative. I then drop in, and all I do is an LDI from 407, which is the, the keyboard data register, and put that into, R, into R0, done, done. That is the, that is get C. I mean, we just walked through it conceptually, but that's, that's basically it. Well, not basically, that's absolutely it. That's all of it. Okay, so if I do one more thing here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna code in hex right now. I'm gonna make this a trap instruction and the trap is gonna be hex two zero. What do you suppose that's going to be? Get C. And I'm going to make this guy a trap instruction. And he's going to be hex 25, which is a halt instruction. There's my program. Okay. Everybody cool? Program counter's ready. And I just say step. And when I step, I drop into that get C routine. Now check it out. If we just watch this, we're just going to kind of button this up and then we'll be done. Okay. Um, so I store away R7. Notice what R7 already has in it. 3001. What is that? That's the incremented program counter. When, I'm, when I make the trap call, it stores that away. So I store that away down. Did you, see, did you see it down here? Now suddenly it's right there. 3001. I just stored it away so I don't make any mistakes. Then I'm loading R0 from 0406. What is R0? It's nothing. I branch. And I'm just going ding, 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 because what has not happened? Nobody pressed a keystroke. I, I just highlight the console and I go, I press something, just a key, okay? Where am I? I'm back. I now load it again. Do you see it? R0 is now eight zero 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 that is that's one and all zeros status bit's been set so we kick out okay and now i'm going to load indirect from fe02 which is the keyboard data register boink now i don't know what 6b is, uh, 68 is i kind of know because i pressed the key i kind of know what i pressed um but let's do one last thing then Let's do, let's do out. Okay, I'm going to tweak the program. What's I got that? a quick question. Doc. Yeah. So is there a way to get the program counter into a register without doing like JSR? Because right now I've been kind of just doing JSR to the next line. Um, not that I know of. I don't think you can directly manipulate the PC, but you can do something like JSR and now you have it in R7, and then okay, like, that's what and, then, doing. and then put that somewhere else, Perfect. store it away to memory, things yeah. like that, and then jump back, you know, by doing a ret. Yeah, I, I was doing JSR to the, just like, I put the next line label and it would JSR to there and then I'd have it. Right. I thought that was kind of gross, but I guess that's the only way to do it. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> What was the one again? 21, two, one is the out, right? Yeah, there we go. Get C, then we go out. So check it out. What we're going to do, and then this is going to be the, the end of, we're going to reset everything and I'm going to just step into get C, right? And we just go back and forth there, spinning on it. I'm going to go to the console. I'm going to put capital K and then I'm going to come back out 
It's going to be happy. It's going to pull that value. And there it is, 4B. Sorry, 4, yeah, 4B. Okay. Then I pull, I reload R7. And then I ret. Now I'm back to where I started. Now I'm going to drop into out. And what you're going to see is the same concept only on the monitor, on the console. Okay. I store away R7 just to hang on to it. I store R1 because I'm going to use it and I don't want to trash it. I then I'm going to load 438 right down here. That is the console, the monitor status register. It's like, can I write to you console? And it's going to go, it's going to load it and it's going to be fine because that's only, that's only negative if it's like, whatever, you know, going really fast and it's like, most of the time it's going to be okay. You have to be, you have to be hitting this really fast to collide with that. So it's like, I'm good to write. Then I store R0, which is the value that I still had. And I'm putting it into indirect through 0439, which has the address of the, the, the console uh, data register. I put that, now watch what happens. As soon as that value got written to that location, it was displayed on the console. Did you see the magique? Did you see the magique? Isn't that cool? That's really cool. I say it's cool. Then I reload R1, I reload R7, and I hustle on back, and I'm done. Boom. And that, that is literally those, those four, keyboard status register and data register, and the console or monitor status register and data register, and right there in the out, the get C and the out instructions or trap routines, that's all of the I.O. in the LC3. We are over time, but anybody who left can, can still go watch it. But anyway, that's what I got for now. Um, when we come back, we are in button-up mode. Yeah, we're just going to go into button-up mode on I.O. That'll be Tuesday. And really, honestly, we did almost everything else that was left for this particular thing. And then we will jump to chapter nine. We'll get into chapter nine on Tuesday. All right, everybody. That's what I got for today. Stay safe. Ping me. Hit me up on uh, Discord if you need to get access to exams. Later.